What's up, YouTube's world famous 718? This is 12 volt reviews and 101. Segment is amplifiers, what to look for. These are some things we're gonna go over and I would wanna make sure that this segment is not confused with another segment that we're gonna have, which is the amplifier 101, which we're gonna get really in depth on amplifiers, how they work, what these specs actually mean, how they are derived and all of that. This is not what we're doing now. What this is is a basic overview on what you can expect to look for when you're shopping for an amplifier for your audio system in your car. And uh, whether you're gonna buy it from us or whether you're gonna buy it wherever on the internet or at your local shop, these are a couple of things that you can look for so you can be more informed when you're making your decision on purchasing this um, equipment. Now, first of all, briefly, an amplifier is the power source for your audio system. It, it, provides that raw power to your speakers, your subwoofers, you know, you connect it from the battery, or all those connections we can go over in another segment. So hopefully you know basically a little bit about an app so I can just go over these things real quickly. What a lot of people want is power, 2,000 watts, a million, billion watts, all these, you know, base heads that really look for this power. What I want to explain to you is there's differences in the ways that a company rates their power for their amplifier. You're never gonna know how they do it because you're not in the test bench or the workbench or the testing area where they are to derive these numbers. So when you see an amp, let's say, that says 5,000 watts, you have to know a couple of things there, whether they're talking about the peak output that that amp can go, the RMS, the, the root mean square, in other words, continuous power that the amp can throw out, whether that rating is in a one ohm load, two ohm load, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things that go into that number. And since it's a lot of indirect, not definite, wishy-washy material that you gotta go through, there's a company called the CEA, the Consumer Electronics Association, that they came up with a way to streamline all this information a single test that all these amplifier companies have to perform to get a number that you can use to rate the power of an amp. It's the CEA compliant power rating. Now the CEA compliant power rating is how much an amplifier can produce into a 4 ohm load with a 14.4 volt supply and 1% of distortion. Whatever that means to you doesn't matter, it just means that that number is from a third party that has nothing to do with the manufacturer and it's a real number that you can go by. So if the amp that you're interested in has this number, it's a good number that you can look at to really know how much power that amp is producing at four ohms. Now we have on this list THD, which is a uh, total harmonic distortion. That's what that spec means. All that means to you is a percentage of how much your amp is going to distort the signal coming from your head unit. The lower that number is, the better for you because that means that it's going to be a clear output. You don't want something with high harmonic distortion because it's going to be a lot of distortion in the sound that you're going to get out of your speakers. The lower that number is, the better for you. When well, you see this S slash N, that's a signal to noise ratio. That's a ratio of how much signal from the head unit compared to how much noise the amp is producing. The higher that number is, the better. You're gonna look for a higher number in that spec signal to noise ratio. Then we have class ratings. Class ratings, you have class A, you have class B. You have class A, B, and you have class D right now as far as amps go. Class A is very high sound quality for audio files. It's very expensive. You don't see too much of it. Maybe you got some companies out there that in the higher end of uh, sound competition, sound quality, that you have find class A. Same with class B. It's very good quality. Class A, B is a hybrid of both class A and B, and it's what you normally find when you're doing interior speakers like your door speakers, the speakers on your rear deck or whatever, you usually would find a class AB amp very good for those. Class D 
is a very good am uh, amplifier for subwoofer applications. Very efficient. It requires less amp draw. It produces less heat. And that's where the efficiency comes from in powering subwoofer. So if you're going to have a subwoofer, look for a class D amplifier. Those uh, class ratings are something that you can look for depending on what type of system you're trying to build. Cooling method. It's going to be a fan cooled or MOSFET cooled. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this right now because we have the AMP 101 where we're going to go into all of this. All you need to know is a fan cooled, you have a fan that cools the AMP. MOSFET cooled, you have a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Yeah, that cools the AMP. So you want a fan or you want a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. It just sounds better than a fan, so yeah. Look for MOSFET cooled amps. It's better, more efficient in cooling the amp. Check for amplifier 101s and we'll get into that a little more. Crossover. If the amp has a built-in crossover, that's good because it's going to save you money. Uh, you don't have to buy an external crossover. And the crossover basically, you can eliminate certain frequencies depending on what speaker you're using the amp for. So it all goes back to application. What are you using this amp for? Are you using it to power your door speakers? You're using it to power your subwoofer. If you're using it to power your door speakers, your interiors, you're going to want to use the high pass filter. If you're using it to power your subs, you want to use the low pass filters. We have a segment coming up on crossovers. Check it out. One on one crossovers. Remote gain controls. That's the little knob that some amps come with, some amps don't come with it. But it's actually the gain control that's on the physical amplifier just with a remote wire that goes and you can mount it on your center console under the dash or whatever so you can have access to the gain control. The gain just controls the signal level that's going into the amp. And you, it's good to have it if, you want, if you're tweaking your amp. A lot of people don't ever use it, but it's good to have if you're an audiophile you like to tweak your system. This is a very good uh, thing to have in amps speaker level inputs now speaker level inputs you can check to see if the amp has it it's going to be right on the box you're going to see speaker level inputs it's something that if the amp has it they're going to promote and advertise it if your head unit does not have preamp outputs meaning where you plug your rca wire into to connect to the amp then you're going to have to use what's called a line output converter you know, that's just another device that you would have to use if you don't have the preamp outs. If your amp has speaker level inputs, you don't need a line output converter. Now what you can do is just plug your speaker wire straight into the amp. It's going to be a high level feed, not as good as RCA's, but at least you don't have to get the line output converter and save you money and a headache. Preamp outputs are outputs from one amp that will allow you to connect that amp to another amp. Very good when you're bi-amping, when you're using two or more amps, to have preamp outputs. You just plug the RCAs into one amp, connect to the other amp, and that's a done connection. These are just a couple of things that you want to look for. Now, let's just do a review. When you get an amp, make sure you know the application, if you want to use it for your door speakers, if you want to use it for your subwoofers. Make sure you know what power you need. If you, if you see the, RC, the CEA excuse me, compliant power rating, that means nothing to you if you don't know what power you, you need anyway. Let's say you have a system and you have four speakers in the doors, two in the front, two in the back. They're all, all, they're all 100 watt speakers. You got 100 here, 100 here, 100 here, 100 there. That's 400 watts. Let's say they're four ohm speakers. So you have 100 watts by four channels. Each door would have a channel and then that would be a four channel amp that you need. I didn't put it on the list, but you know, I should have, because a lot of people might not know, but you should know if you need a, a, a mono block, which is a one channel lamp, if you need a two channel lamp, if you need a four channel lamp, or you need a five channel lamp. A channel is what speaker wire is going into, in, into the amp and what it's gonna power. If I plug a speaker wire into channel one, it's gonna power a speaker that's coming from the first channel. If I plug a speaker wire into channel two, second channel. Now, ohms is another thing that you need to know, but you don't need to know it as a spec here. It's going to say power at 2 ohms or power at 4 ohms. If I can get 200 watts at 2 ohms, I would only get, let's say, 100 watts at 4 ohms. 
those are power ratings that you need to know and you need to know what power you need how you're wiring up your speakers these are all questions you can ask the bigger picture automotive systems if you call 718-249-9909 we can walk you right through that this was just something to let you know what to look for when you're shopping for an amp. So check out the bigger picture 718.com. Look up, look up some amps. You know, we can sell you amps. Uh, we can wire it up for you. We can hook up your whole system. Give us a call at 718-249-9909 and we'll help you out with whatever it is that you need. Thank you for watching this segment. We're going to have a bunch of other segments coming up soon. Just look for them on the YouTube channel, 12 Volt Reviews and 101s. Thank you very much.